Welcome to the official GRMNT channel. In this series, we'll be recreating the 600 euro acne inspired pair of trousers. We're going to start out in Clo3D, the industry leading software, from the most basic shape, a square. We'll learn how to alter it step by step into an actual pair of trousers. All other tutorials are starting with a pre-made block which already is 70% of the work done. And they always fail to explain why these shapes are the way that they are probably because they don't know either, or have learned them from a book and stuck to them ever since. But not us, since we want you to leave this video with actual, practical knowledge. We will not be referencing any pattern making books, since the information they offer is very dense and off-putting for beginners, and honestly, their basic blocks are pretty outdated. We instead will use our intuition to create the shapes in a very dynamic, visual format. If you've never done anything like this before, consider yourself lucky, because this video is literally gonna demystify every single step. After we finish developing the shape, we'll learn how to add the details, how to prepare the patterns for printing, and then we're off to the atelier to actually make them. We'll use the Clo3D files to make the pair in the real world. We'll see how we painted them, which turned out to be an incredibly fun process. We'll learn how to properly cut them, how to use the sewing machine for the first time, and how to do the finishing touches in a way that we'd feel comfortable sending out to a client. But the journey doesn't end there. We'll learn how to bring back the pair of trousers from the real world into the digital world, and we'll use it to now dress our avatar. Through truly innovative virtual production techniques, we'll also learn how to position our avatar back into the real world, which is kind of mind-blowing. Mastering either one of those techniques will set you up for success in a fashion design career. You don't have to apply all of the steps in your brand, but it definitely doesn't hurt knowing them, or even that they exist as an option. With that out of the way, let's get started with the first chapter, the design stage. And here we are inside of Clo3D. First thing to do, Head over to the library tab on the upper left corner, go into the avatar folder by double clicking, mail v2, and I always choose Henry. All of the avatars have exactly the same body type. I'm gonna go with Henry, double click, and as you can see, Henry is now in the 3D window, but he's not only in the 3D window. If I head over to the 2D window, I hold down my middle mouse click, start panning, we can also see him here. We can use the scroll wheel in order to zoom in and out. If you already know how to construct the basic trouser block, you can just skip ahead and not bother. But the reality is that even if you went to university, even if you are super familiar with design, chances are you haven't learned it the way that I have. I'm pretty much self-taught. I didn't go to university, I learned all of this by myself, I maybe opened the book once or twice, but the thing is, I played for more than a year with all of the possibilities of design, and this is what I learned. So, as a beginner, let's say you've never, ever in your life seen the pattern for a pair of trousers. How would you start to construct it? Let's start with something super, super primitive, which is gonna look kinda like a Minecraft piece. I'm gonna press S in order to open up this rectangle tool. I'm gonna simply click here in the 2D window, and it's gonna bring up this box here. With height, we don't care for them, let's just press OK, it's gonna form a square block. Because we can always go back and just start shaping it. And how can we shape it? I'm pressing Z on my keyboard, and now I have access to the segments and to the points. My very primitive designer plan is to actually shape this box just around the body. Okay, I'm not even gonna create an angle to it, I'm just gonna make it as if our leg is perfectly straight to the ground. This menu here allows me to see the pattern piece as if it were fully transparent, it's called transparent surface. The keen eyed amongst you are gonna also notice, you have a translucent surface, you have a monochrome, and we also have the default one which is the front texture surface. But given how our fabric is not yet attached, it just looks like plain white. So if I were to actually go here in the fabric tab and grab the denim raw, drop it on top of my existing fabric or drop it directly onto the piece, 
You're gonna see now that we have a bit of texture. Let's just use this one. But we want to see through it just so we can scale it to the actual length and width of the body. So I'm gonna go into this menu here and I'm gonna look for transparent surface. The denim did not disappear. It's only made invisible in this viewer here. So if I go back to the textured, there you go. The denim is still there, don't worry. You haven't clicked anything wrong. So let's go to transparent surface again. Press Z in order to access the edit pattern tool. And I'm gonna start dragging this segment down. And as you can see, it kind of has a tendency to snap, which is good. But if you wanna be 100% confident that you're actually dragging it vertically, hold down shift. And now you can do it on the vertical line, on a diagonal 45 degrees or 90 degrees. This gives you a lot more control and certainty as you are designing. So as I'm holding down shift, dragging down, I'm simply gonna release the left click and there we have it. This is gonna be my one leg, right? But your instinct should already be telling you, hmm, the width is crazy. This is not gonna sit onto the body unless we kind of make it like a skirt. But we are currently just constructing a single leg. So what I want to do now is again, Z, I'm gonna start dragging this segment, hold down shift in order to drag it horizontally. And I want to take it, let's try right up against this edge. So I'm zooming all the way in, it's gonna be the width of my body in the 2D viewer, whatever. You're gonna, <laughs> you're probably gonna feel like this is way too tight because it is, okay? But we're just constructing it very primitively, just bear with me. Then. I want to create the opposite side of the pant. So how can I actually do that? I'm gonna press A on my keyboard, which brings the transform pattern tool. This one is one of the most common ones. I'm gonna now select the pattern piece and I'm gonna do it like in any other software. Control C and Control V. I can simply paste it on the side and there we have it, two legs. We can even move it here in the 3D window to see them. But then let's say that, oh my god, okay, so we're getting a hang at this, we already know, we want to flare it up, right? We want to widen the base. If I press Z and start dragging this point, that's a big issue, right? Because when we edited one part of the trouser, the other part did not get edited. That makes the project very complex to manage. Because every single time when you make a modification, you have to also do it perfectly identical on the opposite side. Hmm. In order to avoid this altogether, Clo is very smart. I'm gonna control Z, do this feature back. I'm gonna keep control Z, control Z, go all the way, go all the way. And I now deleted the piece that we just copy pasted because copy pasting is not the kind of operation that we want to do here. What we want to do is to, again, press A on the keyboard, select this pattern piece, and this time, I'm gonna press Control D on my keyboard. Huh, so this also worked. I didn't have to press Control C, Control V, I just pressed Control D. I wonder what happened here. So I'm gonna now click in my 2D window and it created the same pattern piece. That's very interesting. It also looks kind of different because it's outlined in blue and it also has a connector which shows me that there must be some sort of linkage between those two pattern pieces. So if I press Z this time and start, oh, oh my God. Okay, I can already see the gears turning because this is super exciting. We're now editing our pattern pieces symmetrically. This is a lot more useful for trousers. As you probably know, if they're not perfectly symmetrical, I'm sorry for you, but you're still doing great things with your life. So yeah, let's just control Z now, bring back the point and there we have it. Let's now do the back components. But in order to just keep everything super, super clear and simple and show exactly why you don't want to do it this way, what I can do now is to control C, control V. I'm gonna copy the same pattern piece for the back panel, rotate in my 3D window using the right click on my mouse. Hmm. As you can see, we're now in the monochromatic view. And this one, as I'm rotating, shows me that there's a dark gray color on the back of my pattern piece. This one is a bit more of a complex notion, but what you do want to keep in mind for now is that you want to have the gray part facing your avatar and not the exterior of your garment. I'm simply gonna go here. I want to click onto my pattern piece. I want to rotate it. 
let's go back to the monochromatic view there we go and i can simply click on it and drag it just behind the avatar using the middle click i'm panning so the same as we're doing in the 2d window we can do it here in the 3d window and as you can see when you're clicking on just a single piece or even multiples by holding down shift you can even do it like this right you can affect multiple at the same time i'm gonna control z you can see that there there is a gizmo right you have one which is circular this one rotates the pattern piece this way this one rotates it on the z axis this one rotates it side to side perfect very easy very intuitive you also have this small square which allows you to simply move it but depending on where your camera so how exactly we're looking at the avatar this is gonna change right so we can move it like this front to back we go from here we can move it side to side we can just keep changing the angle and affecting our pattern piece what i'm trying to do now is to simply position it perfectly just behind the avatar and we want to also copy this back pattern piece we want to copy it on the opposite side how would you guys do that well following exactly the same principle as we had here the right leg is the same with the left leg so we're gonna simply control d and paste it here there we go i can shift it now in order to help the simulation i want to bring it as close as possible to the body okay there we go bring it lower down and now we're preparing mentally for the next huge step which would be sewing all of those components together how would we actually do that well there are multiple ways of doing it first of all let's say that we want to sew the side we know that the length of this segment here is identical to the length of this segment here because we just copy pasted the same pattern piece so i can press n on my keyboard which brings up this tool here i'm gonna hold down the left click it's called segment sewing i love using the shortcuts i highly encourage you to learn the basic ones and constantly use them never go into this menu here because it's quite confusing only when you don't know what a tool is called you can start looking through them but as you can see they still have drop downs right so you have to start looking for them and that can become very tedious so using the end tool i can now sew those two pattern pieces i can do it here in the 3d window just because i feel like for a beginner this might feel a bit more intuitive so i'm gonna sew it from here sew it here right so i've taken it let me just make sure that i have this viewer enabled here i've sewn this panel with this one here awesome let's now oh have a look at that it's also sewn on the opposite side so when you are copying your pattern pieces symmetrically like we did with Control and d command d on the mac as you can see it copied the pattern pieces cool so what else do we have to sew if we were to sew this piece with this piece it would do it from the top of the segment all the way to the base which is not necessarily something that we want okay if we were making a skirt this would actually work and let me just showcase it to you let's also sew the back here i'm gonna do this piece with this piece then i'm rotating to the front view i want to save the project whenever you have to do simulation make sure that you're saving the projects first i'm gonna create a new folder calling it acne masterclass and this is gonna be acne v1 amazing save it just because there is a possibility that your computer cannot handle your simulation and it crashes and you have to start all over again cool so now that we've done all of this let's see what happens right let's just try and simulate to better understand what we're constructing in order to simulate i'm gonna press the space bar hmm so our career as a fashion designer is we have no idea what happened here right well we actually do let me just control z and your intuition probably told you that something is wrong with this sewing line here because instead of going like it does here straight lines all across all of them parallel this one crosses so what ended up happening is that we've sewn the base of the front with the top of the back okay you can actually do that in 3d very difficult to do in the real world but you can do it and as you saw the simulation was a mess we want to avoid this kind of mess so 
In order to change it, we could press B, which is this tool here, called the Edit Sewing. We could select this line, delete it, go back, press N. Start from the top or start from the bottom is different. You can see that this notch shifts position. So depending on where I have my cursor, it's going to start either from the top or from the base. And it works exactly the same way in the 2D window. So let's start from the top. And this time when we're connecting it with the opposite panel for the front of the gene, we're going to press it like this. So I'm going to do it in the 2D window now just to show you that it's also a possibility and this is how you're going to end up working professionally. Okay, I want to click it. There we have it. Now we've corrected, but there was actually a much faster way. I did Control Z, Control Z. I'm opening this Edit Sewing Line tool, and now I'm selecting my sewing line. I can again select it in the 3D window or in the 2D window, and on my keyboard I want to press Control B, which reverses the sewing line. I can also Control Z. Let's make it wrong again. We can right click and we can do reverse sewing. There we have it. Cool. So now let's press A and press space. Hmm. Damn. So we were going for a pair of jeans and we ended up with a skirt. That's kind of ridiculous, right? We had a plan and we lost our way. But let's just keep pushing through. So what can we do here? Let's try and figure out exactly how a pair of trousers would connect. I'm going to control Z to... Control Z, Control Z. You can do it multiple times until you actually reach a step where you feel like you've screwed up. I'm gonna press B and I want to go here and let's, let's just try and visualize it, right? Let's try and make this sewing line. Instead of going all the way from the top towards the base, let's just make it to around the crotch area, around crotch height. So in order to do that, we have multiple options here. Say that you've already created a sewing line and you just want to shorten it. Well, the edit sewing tool again comes in super handy. So we can click on the sewing line. I'm going to do it here in the 2D window. And I want to start lifting this point here. So I'm doing the right leg. It's on the left side. It's mirrored. I want to start lifting it. And I can also see my reference here in the 2D window. So when we position the pattern pieces, we did it not by accident we did it because this is how you should be working position them close to where you want them to be next to your avatar then i'm pressing b and if i simulate again let's see what happens so we shorten the sewing line but we've only done it on one leg let's sim press space huh now it's becoming a pretty interesting skirt right <laughs> <laughs> and this must be already like flashing in your head and going like flow is amazing but this is not why we're here okay <laughs> that's another lesson for another day so i'm gonna control z control z and i want to press b again and let's lift this sewing line on the opposite leg this time and start lifting it up and the beauty with flow is it gives us this blue dot here as you can see, our cursor, as I'm holding it down, so I'm holding down the left click, do not let go of it. You can see that it gives me this point. This one is telling me exactly where I need to stop to have a matching sewing line. This is another huge advantage. In the real world, you have to take measurements. You have to use the ruler, it takes time. And Clo, instant. So let's just drag it up, boom, you find the dot, release. Let's simulate again, see what happens. Okay, this looks like a different skirt. And it's all because we didn't do the same thing for the back. So let's just start working on that. And I'm gonna show you now another way of creating a shorter sewing line, which would be to go to this back view. Let's just make sure that we have it here as a reference. I'm pressing B on my keyboard, selecting this sewing line here, and I'm gonna delete it. Now I'm going to introduce another incredibly useful tool, which does not connect an entire segment to another entire segment, but rather is going to allow us to only connect however much we actually want to connect. So let's go here and it's called free sewing shortcut M. We're going to be using this all the time. It's incredibly useful. Learn it. 
take notes put it in your notebook this is a must know tool so i'm gonna start connecting it here from the top i want to drag it down it doesn't really matter because we're gonna do so many adjustments that just whatever let's look here at the 2d window and bring it roughly let's say 200.3 we want to also make sure that we're starting with the same orientation okay so i started here from the top i took it towards the crotch you want to also connect it from the top make sure that your cursor is snapping in the corner click start dragging it down and the same blue dot appears right so we've done a perfectly matched sewing line i'm gonna press q which is the same as pressing a in the 2d window it's this one here so select move q same thing only for the 3d window instead of the 2d window i'm pressing now two on my keyboard in order to snap to the front view so this is another very useful set of tools which is your keys the number keys on the main keyboard one takes me to this perspective view 45 degrees two takes me from the front view three opposite 45 from the front four profile view five comes from the top this one again very useful six opposite profile and eight is the back so i'm pressing two in order to go from the front view and let's just press space in order to simulate boom there we have it the trousers are done thank you for joining us in this tutorial the next step is to create a measurement around this line here it's called the upper hip where we know that the trouser is gonna be sitting on. You want to go here and you have two options. This one basic circumference measure and this one surface circumference measure. In our case, we can do the basic one. I'm gonna click once here at the front. Then I'm going over to the side of the avatar on the profile, clicking here for the second time. And now we want to go from the back view. We can center it by pressing 8 and then zooming in with the scroll wheel. If we take it higher, it doesn't look right. If we take it lower, it still doesn't look right. What we're looking for is the gap here between the line and the underwear to be the same as the gap here on the opposite side. So let me just drag it up a tiny amount, maybe something like this. Now if we go to the front view, we're going to also see that the gap is the same. We've created a perfect measurement here to reference and we can take this value here open up the calculator this one is 846.9 i'm gonna type in 846.9 and we need to divide it by how many rectangles we have four and they're all identical to one another so we can simply divide it by four the principle is we take the value that we want and we divide it by the value that we currently have so now let's go here in the 2d window i'm pressing z clicking on this segment here as you can see it's much shorter thus the entire trouser was super tight around the body you could just see it right this is not okay only if you do it from a super elastic fabric and if you're creating tights but we're looking for oversized denim trousers. So let's go into the calculator and divide the value that we got. So this is the one that we know that we must have. We could even add a couple centimeters to it just to ensure that it's gonna fit properly, but we're gonna take care of this aspect later down the line. And we want to divide this value by the one that we have. So divide it by 178.2. And then I'm gonna multiply everything. I can press on equal. I want to multiply this ratio here by 100 press equal then we can use this to scale our pattern pieces so this ratio here tells us hey you want to go to your pant we can press a create a selection box around all of the pattern pieces we're gonna scale all of them at the same time we can start dragging by clicking the left click, holding it and starting to shift this line. I'm going to press escape to cancel the operation. If I do it this way, it only goes vertically. If I do it this way, it only goes horizontally. But in our case here, they're short and they're tight. So we want to do it on all axes at the same time. So we need to grab it. I'm going to press escape again from any of the corners. It works no matter on which corner you select. It's just going to shift the position of the pattern pieces differently on the 2D window, but it doesn't make a difference. So as I'm dragging from the corner, 
hold down the left click and then press at the same time. So as you're holding and dragging, press the right click. And this one gives you the option to input a custom value. This is an invaluable tool. You can use it all the time. Whenever you're dragging points, segments, scaling, you want to, again, hold down the left click, drag, and then right click. And you can just input however much you want. Now, let's go to the calculator and take this value here. We can copy it, go into Clow, and we can simply paste it. I'm going to press OK. It's going to look incredibly oversized and positioned very wrong, but it doesn't matter. We can just simulate and go from there. I'm going to press space on the keyboard and we can even start dragging it down. So let's try and position the trouser to where we know we want it to sit onto the body. So at the back, we want it slightly higher compared to the front. If you just grab whatever pair of jeans you already have at home, you're going to notice that this is exactly how you want them to sit. Awesome. But we're also kind of getting a sense it's kind of tight here, right? And that's all because of the primitive nature of our design. This is not a good design, okay? I'm only doing this to show you to create the mindset of how you want to actually draw your shapes. You should not be opening a design book every single time when you want to draft your basic blocks. You can go inside a clo, look at the simulation, use your intuition and construct it from scratch because this is invaluable. This actually allows you to design whatever your mind can come up with. I'm gonna stop the simulation now and we want to figure out Hmm, so how tight exactly are those trousers onto the avatar? Let's go into this menu. I'm simply hovering my cursor over it and I want to select this option here, which is the strain map. Huh, this is another incredible tool. So as you can see, the pant is incredibly, incredibly tight around this area. We've somehow solved the top, okay? But if you look at human anatomy, we're tinier here, so this circumference is smaller compared to this one, right? Where your bum is, you have a lot of muscle here. This is why it's super tight and we drew the lines equally. They're just going vertically to the ground, right? They don't have any other extra shape to account for the needs of extra fabric. So how can we actually introduce a bit more fabric here? I'm gonna, first of all, try and locate exactly how low we want our crotch to be. I'm gonna open up the reference here, side by side, and let's try and eyeball it. I reckon his actual crotch is around this point here, so we need to drop it by a considerable amount, I would say around 10 centimeters. So in order to locate it here in the 3D window, we know with our cursor, kind of, it's kind of rough, but whatever, we know how low we want it to go. So I'm simply gonna click here. Hmm. If I click in the 3D window, and you look at the 2D window afterwards, you're gonna see that the blue dot appears. And this is, again, an invaluable tool. If I do it the opposite way, so if I click in the 2D window, we're not gonna see our point of reference on the 3D window, which is a bit problematic. I wish they fixed it, but whatever. Let me just click again, and then we can go into the 2D window and use this point as reference. I'm gonna press X, which is a new tool. It's called add point slash split line. Use the shortcut X, it's super useful. And I can simply click onto the segment right next to where I place my reference point here. I'm gonna click once. If I press Z, you're gonna see that it created another one of those segment points, which is super, super, super useful. Now, let's do the same onto the back panel. How can we do that? We can simply align this pattern piece here. You're gonna see it snapping and aligning itself perfectly. I'm gonna press X again. Let's go onto the back panel, do exactly the same thing here. So I'm clicking, there we have it. What I want to do now is to press B and I want to sew it lower down because we know where we want our crotch to end. We can simply extend our sewing line. I'm dragging it here, dragging it onto the opposite segment so we're matching it in length. Do the same for the back, boom. Do the same here, boom. There we have it. I'm pressing 2, I'm pressing Q, and then I'm simulating again. As you can see, this is a much better point compared to what we had before. But the pants are still super tight. We have not affected the actual circumference around the bum. I'm gonna connect it from the top where the crotch is, take it all the way to the base, click, 
And then you also want to connect it here. So starting from the top, drag the cursor down all the way to the base. I'm now gonna press Q again to go into the move tool or A in the 2D window and Sim, which is the space bar. There we have it. We've created the first most basic, most unwearable pair of trousers. Given how they're made of raw denim, when you see this color here, even when you see yellows, it's kind of problematic, but red means that they're ripping at the seams, okay? So they're way above their elasticity and your screw. This is not a wearable, <laughs> this is not a wearable design. In reality, you couldn't even fit them on onto the body. So our aim now is to start shaping the trouser just so it starts to release this tension here. And I want to introduce you to a new concept now. I'm pressing Z and I want to take this point here and I want to start extending it out. I'm gonna hold down shift, start dragging it towards the exterior of the pattern piece, right click and let's just input, I don't know, let's start with five centimeters. So we're doing 50 mil, pressing OK. Then let's do exactly the same thing for the back, okay? So I'm dragging it, holding down shift, right click, 50. Boom, there we have it. I'm pressing Q again to free up my selection, pressing space. So, wait a second, we added fabric hmm, in between the legs here. And it was about enough because we're no longer in the red, right? It's still a tight trouser. It looks super, super weird around this area. That doesn't really matter at this point, but it's kind of working, right? So in terms of the wearability, you could actually wear this, even though it looks ridiculous, because we have a slight buildup of fabric here, right? What is this? Some inverse camel toe. And here, hmm, maybe not enough of it. So let's just go back into our design and we're gonna start creating a curve. But in order to create our curve, here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna grab this panel here, so the front panel, I'm gonna position it just as it's gonna get sewn with the back panel. I want to press Z. I'm gonna select this segment here. Hold down Shift. Also select this opposite segment here, so where I know it's gonna be connecting. I'm gonna now right click, and I want to do Match Up to Start. Huh. So this is what my trouser is doing at the moment. It's connecting here, so we know that we're sewing it leg on leg here and then we're sewing front with the front back with the back but this area here does not make a lot of sense being sharp like this it's very this would be like a point where you start walking it's gonna tear it's not gonna be comfortable it doesn't make any sense so what we want to do is to have a closer look at exactly how those panels are connecting in 3d space because this is gonna give us a much clearer visualizer i'm selecting this component here holding down shift also selecting the opposite one and we don't want to delete them we just want to make them invisible how do we do that well I'm pressing shift and Q on my keyboard if I press shift and W I bring it back if I press shift and Q it goes away very useful tool we use it all the time we can also make the avatar not visible it's not gonna disappear but you can do it from this tab here. So click, click, goes away, comes right back, goes away, comes right back, perfection. So in order to better understand, let's just have a look specifically at this area here, this connection point, okay? Hmm, it looks kind of weird, right? Because if we bring back our avatar, our, we have an actual curve. We start from here and then it curves in, curves out, so, Wait a second, why is it sharp? Why is our shape like this? Well, it should not be like this. We want to curve it exactly following the same shape as the body, okay? So it's similar to how you have your armpit here. You don't want to create the armpit at the base like this. It's sharp, it's dumb, you lift your arm, you rip the fabric. If it's natural fabric, you're gonna rip it at the seams. You want to create a curvature, okay? Hmm, very interesting. How can we do that? Well, best way to do it, again, I'm gonna bring back by pressing Q, by pressing A, selecting the two pattern pieces, Shift Q to bring them back into the viewer, make the avatar invisible again, and let's start shaping this area here. How? Well, these parts I've already arranged, and 
Now we're gonna be introduced to a new tool, the Edit Curve Point Tool, V. I'm gonna click once onto the segment. If I press Z, it disappeared. Even though we've created this dot here, it disappeared. Why? Well, it's because it's only visible when we're using the Edit Curve Point Tool. So I'm gonna press V again, and now it shows up. It's in red. We can now grab it and start dragging it down. Okay, let's start bringing it like this. This one kind of creates too much of a cut in, and if I go in now again, I'm gonna shift Q. Let's see what happens. So this is the back panel. We cut into it a lot, and beforehand we had this color here, right? So the simulation was kind of working with us. Let's see what happens now. Uh, uh. <laughs> We've created another issue. The one that we had before, it's kind of shifted towards the back. That's kind of telling us, oh my god, you've cut way too much in. But we still want to keep the curvature at the base, right? So I'm pressing V, and I want to create another curve point onto my segment. And I want to just bring it out, okay? This is still not the correct shape, whatever. I'm just doing it so you understand how trousers work. I'm going to simulate again. And it went away from red, so we're kind of... It's not 100% safe, we're still in the red at the front here, it's still tight, it's still problematic. Don't worry about it. Let's keep going. I'm gonna make this side invisible again, okay? And as you can see now, oh my god, we actually have a bit of a resemblance, it kind of looks curvy, okay? And beforehand it was a V, it was a sharp V, now it's curvy. So, the front doesn't look curvy. Hmm. How do we make the front curvy then? Good question. Great question. Thank you. V. And start shaping the front as well. We're going to do it almost symmetrically. It's hand drawn, so it's not going to be perfect, but whatever. Let's just do exactly the same procedure. Now we've created our small curve here. Okay? I'm going to simulate again. I'm going to press Shift W to bring all of them back. And as you can see, once we did that, we kind of reintroduced the problem because we did end up cutting a bit of fabric around this area, okay? A bit too much. So what can we do now? Let's make sure that we're aligning this pattern piece here perfectly vertical. How can I do that? Well, I'm selecting it, scrolling down here onto my fabric, grain direction, and I want to press this button here. Boom. It automatically snaps it back to the perfect vertical direction which I had previously. I'm grabbing this front panel, repositioning it here. This one is also rotated, so select it by pressing A, clicking on it, grain line, boom. Snap it back. Amazing. Now the pattern pieces are set one next to another and we can try to add a bit more fabric. So how can we do that? Well, just like we did before, we're gonna keep this curve here, but we're simply gonna just drag this point out. So let's start dragging it just a tiny bit further. I'm gonna bring it out by 35mm here on the front panel. And let's try with the back, let's do also 35 Awesome. Simulate. And let's see if this kind of works, which kind of starts to look decent right it starts to look like a pair of trousers it's still far from perfect and we're gonna see some other issues that we still have i want to bring back my avatar and as you can see some messy things happened with the simulation this panel here the leg went through which is a possibility in 3d anything can happen in the real world it probably wouldn't be like this but in 3d what you have to do simply drag it towards the front so as the simulation is not working I'm simply dragging it towards the front, pressing space again, boom. It sorted itself out. The back of the leg, same issue, but just opposite. Perfect polar opposite, I don't know how that happened. Let's start dragging it out, simulate, boom. There we have it, we're wearing trousers now. Let's try and reposition the pair of trousers exactly as it was before. And we're gonna still see some issues here and there, right? Let's try and understand why. The fabric here from the back is kind of getting pulled towards the front, right? You can see a tensioning here, bunching up, and we kind of want it to meet down the middle, okay? So let's try something different. Hmm. The reason why this is happening is, again, we have the bum. This is the main volume that we need to create fabric for, to add fabric for. And where is the bum? Well, 
it's on the back panel it's not towards the front so what we want to do now i'm gonna press z let's just try and add a bit more for the back compared to the front right let's again start dragging it hold down shift right click i'm gonna add an extra five centimeters which is a considerable amount let's simulate again boom this actually is starting to look a lot better let's just bring the panels next to one another i'm gonna again press z bring them here match up to start and if I press V, I'm going to see now that I don't have that smooth of a transition between the front and the back panel. In order to ensure that it's smoother and that it's also accommodating for, again, <laughs> the bum, let's just make sure that we're also creating this kind of a curve here. Boom. So we actually ended up cutting into the fabric a tiny bit more towards the back while also extending this point out a bit further. Let's simulate again. This is starting to look really good, isn't it? You can lift the trouser, let it sit in a position where it's 100% comfortable. There you have it. This is like the most basic block construction that you can do. Let's now reset the pattern pieces. This one is already vertical. This one is not. So I'm going to, again, go to the grain direction, press the arrow, select this one here, grain direction arrow, and let's reposition them as we had them before. Let's try and create the shape here. So the idea is that we want to add a tiny bit of fabric starting from this line at the top and we simply want to increase it on the side. First of all, to increase comfort, but it's also oversized. So at the moment, if we have a look at the pattern piece, it's very straight. And this is very extremely uncommon, even for menswear. You do not see such straight cuts pairs of trousers almost ever. Because the result is a pair that is actually grabbing onto your ass and immediately afterwards you can see it becoming bulky. And you want to have a smooth transition between those features. Press V for the edit curve point tool and I want to create two points to start with. We can always reshape afterwards. I'm gonna do one by the crotch, so in line with the crotch, both on the front and back panels. And then we need to do one on the low hip, which is pretty much the larger circumference that you can take as a measurement, which is around the middle of the bum. So I'm gonna click based on the reference. I'm gonna click around here. There we go. I'm seeing the reference on this side. There we go. I'm gonna lift this uh, pattern piece up a tiny bit. Pressing V, creating another curve point. There we have it. And of course, since we're working symmetrically, we did the control D. It's also applying it on the opposite leg as well. And now I can start adjusting my points. So I want to grab this one. I'm holding down shift. And as I'm dragging it towards the right, let's increase it by, I don't know, let's do 15 mil. Start with. Do the same on the opposite leg, 15 mil. Awesome. And then these points here, which are lower, located by the crotch, I'm only going to do 11. So just a slightly smaller amount. You could do 15 as well. It will become a bit less rounded. And now I'm pressing 2 to go from the front view, Q, and space. Now I've simulated the pair. And I'm seeing as it is in the real world. Awesome. And I'm actually quite happy with this. We, I kind of nailed the shape. Of course, we still have a lot to do, but... To start with, this is like an incredible result since this is the very first pair that you drafted and you still don't know the measurements. You based everything off of the simulation. I can zoom in here. I want to raise this point just the tiniest, tiniest amount to add a bit more fabric here. The, when you add fabric, it releases tension. There you go. Yeah, now it folds even nicer. At the back, I'm super happy with this shape. What's left to do now, let's become familiarized with the 180 rule. So, the idea is, just like we matched up those two components here, I'm gonna do it again, match up to start, pressing A, shifting them to the side. When you have two components which are connected together, you need to ensure that they have a smooth transition. Where else can we see a connection? With the back and the back panel. So in order to realize it and make it super smooth, transitioning smoothly, all that I need to do, I'm going to grab the back panel. I'm going to take it here. I want to start rotating it, right? Aligning this line with this line, rotating it even further. There we have it. This is perfect. 
And now we need to raise it up, right? We need to straighten it. So let's simply start lifting it up. There you have it. The back is much taller now compared to the front, but that's fine. That's exactly how we want it to be. And now let's do the same thing with the front. So I'm grabbing this component. I'm rotating it in order to align it here. Alignment. There we have it. This one's almost good. It's good in terms of the transition, but we don't have the transition here on the side. So we can kind of preemptively start bringing it down. Let me do it by 15 mil. Something like this. Perfect. And now let's connect the front with the back panel, but we're going to do it on the side this time, not down the middle of the leg. So I'm selecting by pressing Z. Selecting both segments that we want to connect right click match up to start there We have it and now we can actually see what is going on. We can create a tiny bit of a curve here Just so we're smoothing out our transition between everything Let's Shift it here towards the connection point and voila We've just straightened the first pair of trousers. As you can see here at the back, we still have a bit of a sharp corner. So we could redo the process, right? Bring them close up, press V, and then simply raise this point a tiny amount. There you go. And now you have a smooth transition all around the pair of the trousers, which is ideal. That's exactly what we want to see. I'm going to simulate again by pressing space. And we need to become familiarized with the fact that trousers are put through a lot of stress. And the main area of stress is between the legs because you're pushing one foot in front, the other one like this, and then you're switching them over, right? Walking, running, whatever you may be doing in your pair of trousers, they're not standing as such. That's why we definitely need to make sure that there is enough freedom of motion in between the legs. And the best way to do that, I'm going into the avatar tab, male v2, and in this folder we have a pose folder, okay? In the pose folder, I'm going to choose this option here, running. You're not necessarily going to be running in jeans, but let's just, for the sake of it, test it out. Make sure that after I simulate and start lifting the trouser up, there's enough fabric here to actually allow me to move. Which at the moment, a tiny bit tight, not necessarily bad, because this position would be uncomfortable on any sort of cut. But... Just to entertain this idea, let's simply grab the panel. I'm going to rotate it again. Rotate this one. We only need to in order to create our alterations. The other two, you can leave them as such for now. I'm pressing Z. I'm grabbing this point, extending it out this way. This point, extending it out this way. The idea being, again, that we're adding fabric where we need it. When you don't have enough fabric, of course, it becomes tight. And when you are putting your trouser through this kind of stress is going to become super obvious that it's not good enough. So let me simply grab this point and we're going to do a super small adjustment. Let's extend it out by 10. I'm going to do 10 mil. Perfect for the front. Then 10 mil for the back. Extending it out, 10. And that, of course, changed our angle, changed everything. We still need to match up all of our segments aside from this one. Cool. So now let's simulate. See if we got rid of it, and voila. This, uh, you do have to arrange it in place, okay? So don't expect it to just be free of tension. But in the past, we couldn't do this at all. As you saw, even when I lifted it, it still had a bit too much tension. So you wouldn't be able to spread your feet out like this. Small adjustment, major improvement. So now, let's do the matching one more time. So I'm grabbing the front panel making sure that I'm rotating it based on the grain line, rotating this one. Then I'm bringing them close. We changed the angle, like I mentioned. We changed it a tiny bit, but still, let's do the correction. And it seems like the amount was so little that it does not affect us here. What about the back? I'm grabbing this panel, rotating it, then shifting it like this again. No alteration here. The last place to check is, of course, in between the legs. So, Z, I'm going to simply select the two segments, match up to start. I'm pressing V, and we probably can cut a tiny bit more here. Let's make sure that we're zooming out and not affecting it too much. There we go. Super smooth. Sim, make sure that we don't have the redness here in between the legs. 
Now we can go back into the pose menu. I'm gonna go for this one, attention, with the hands on the side, or no, actually let's do this one. 0, 1A, just because the hands are not affecting us, they're not in our operation. And if you want to see an even more accurate simulation, this is the fitting accurate fabric simulation tool, which is five times slower than the normal default one. The default one you want to use as you're designing, this one you use it for animation, and every now and then as you're making progress and you want to make sure that you're heading in the right direction, you can enable it. And this one's gonna make the fabric drape a lot more realistically, again at the expense of your computer behaving uh, and being a lot slower. So yeah. For the trousers, I'm super happy. Let's now open up the reference one more time. And let's try and figure out the next step, right? What do we want to do? We've already done the top. I'm super happy with this. Maybe we can extend it out a tiny bit more. But the thing is, the next step is actually gonna also affect the top. And I'm talking, of course, about the width of the base. We can take this pair, because at the moment it's not skinny, but it's kind of, it, it is like a regular pair. We want to make them oversized. So, I'm gonna now go into the 2D window, selecting this pattern piece here. Rotation, rotation. Oh, 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 oh. When you're making mistakes like this one, simply control Z. Okay, there we have it. I'm positioning the front panel at the front here, grabbing the opposite one, making sure that I'm rotating it as well, based on the grain line. We're gonna discuss more about the grain line once we get to the atelier, but if you want to see exactly what it is and what it looks like, it's this. So I enabled it here from the menu, and if I'm rotating, of course the arrow rotates, so when I'm resetting it, guess what? It goes back to the position so that the line is perfectly vertical. Let me just simulate because that kind of screwed up the project. When you have a situation like this, just start dragging it, you can stop the sim, move the piece in front. I'm pressing Z and I want to extend it equally. I'm gonna do the back panel first, hold down shift, right click and let's try... We need quite a lot, so let's do 50 mil, 5 centimeters. Once you add it up, so 5 centimeters on this one, on this one, on this one and this one, in total you're getting 20 right 10 on each leg so now i'm holding this one as well doing the front panel they're being edited symmetrically so that's really helping us i'm doing 50 mil now let's simulate and have a look at the shape well damn we're actually getting there i'm not super happy with this so as you saw the curve line actually introduces a bit of an error when you're moving your segment like this it was fine but once we're heading out this way you can see that it's creating a bit of a concave shape inside of the leg we definitely do not want to have that we want to straighten this line here so i'm pressing v and i'm grabbing this point and simply dragging it out, so adding even more fabric, making them even more oversized, because you can even see it here. A few millimeters of fabric, look how much of a difference they make. It goes out and it goes back in. Now that we added the fabric back, let's check. The few millimeters from here, that's crazy. Now they're straight, just like we want them to be, based on the reference. Then I want to press V, Create a curve point here, create a curve point here. So both back and front panels. And I want to create a tiny bit of a taper, like this. This one is simply gonna ensure that we don't have the gathering of the fabric where we don't necessarily see it in between the legs. It's not very flattering, it kinda slows your motion. Let's simply bring it as such. And we can even start to take into account the values that we're seeing here. So I can read the value of the segment, it's 806.5. So when I'm creating my shape here, I can try and make it the same, but as you see we have to cut into this one a lot more than we had to cut for the back panel. So we don't necessarily want to do that. Let's do a slight cut here. When you are unsure by how much a segment is longer or shorter compared to the opposite one, here's what you gotta do. Press B, click on the sewing line, and it tells you automatically by how much you need to extend it or cut into the opposite one. So I'm reading here minus 6.4. It means that, now looking at the values, I can either cut into this one by 6.4, simply grabbing this point, dragging it in, or I can extend this one. But in this case, we also have another option for the back panel. So here, I can simply press Z, 
I'm gonna grab this point here, and I want to start dragging it down, and I'm gonna type in manually 6.4. There we have it, it's the tiniest correction, but usually you have this point here at the back, it's slightly lower, and this is part of it, right? You want to correct the length of your segment. Now, let's check on the side here. So when I'm clicking onto the segment, I can see that the difference is only 0.1. Your question might be, is there an even more elegant way? So let me just mess up a couple of the segments. I'm gonna grab this one, grab that one. Is there a more elegant way to actually see all of those differences? Because if you simulate, they're still gonna look okay. You can sew a longer segment onto a shorter one, even in Clo, but you can also do it, of course, in reality. So it's not that big of an issue. But in this case, we definitely want to have them perfectly matching. So. I'm gonna go for this tool here. It doesn't have a shortcut. You only use it a few times as you're advancing through your project and it's called check sewing length. I'm gonna click it and oh my God, so much redness, everything is wrong. I'm gonna now postpone my career as a designer. No, when you're seeing red, you should get excited because it means that you have to do a few corrections, but this tool makes it super easy. Again, press B, click on the sewing line, see what the difference is. In this case, we definitely need to shorten this one by how much? 50.1, boom. Start dragging the point with the Z tool, right click, 50.1. I'm not holding down shift, this is very important because you want to extend it out following exactly the same line. You can see a highlight in purple and this one is telling me, hey, you're following the same feature. It's uh, slightly different than what we did for just horizontal or vertical lines. Now, press B, select those two segments, see what the difference is. 103.8, so I need to extend this one out, start dragging it down, zoom in to make sure that we're on the same line, right click, 103.8. No more redness, how easy was that? I'm now gonna simulate, we can have a look at the trousers, and they look impeccable. Let me open up the project again and set them side by side. As you can see, they're already super close, super, super, super close. This video was brought to you by the GRMNT Masterclass. Get access to the rest of the episodes along with many other designer pieces by following the link in the description. Now, back to the video. It's time to get started working on the details. And the very first one, let's just do the waistband, get it out of the way. This is gonna make life super easy. Here's the thing though. When we designed a pair of trousers, we kind of implemented the width of the waistband directly into the trouser itself. Because as you can see from this point, which is exactly located here to this point, we already have enough depth, right? So our solution here would be to press Z, hold down shift, select those two segments, which automatically are being selected symmetrically right click, offset as internal line, and we want to actually cut into the trouser. And I'm gonna cut it by five centimeters. Then I'm pressing Z again, hold down shift, select the two segments, and I'm simply gonna cut them. We can get rid of those pieces because we want to simplify the waistband. We could use this as a waistband, but it's kind of curvy and curvy lines are si ah, oh my God, they're so difficult to work with. We need to strengthen them, we need to add a bit of interfacing. Let's not have to worry about that, let's just make it straight. I'm gonna delete the components from there, awesome. You can kind of see now the trouser is larger, of course, because the actual circumference here at the base is larger. I'm gonna go here, select the edit measure avatar, and we already have the measurement here. I'm gonna now open up the calculator, type in the value, Right, and then I want to divide it by two because we're gonna create another symmetrically editable piece. It's much easier to work with. Four to three point four five. So I'm gonna press S and create a rectangle right down the middle. Four to three point four five, and I want to do it. We're gonna do fifty five mil in terms of height. Around fifty sixty. This is like a standard kind of height. Then. In order to extend it out, we don't want to copy it symmetrically with Ctrl D because we'd end up with two pieces which we need to connect together. It takes longer to produce, it's more difficult. So what I suggest to do, and this is another super helpful trick, when you're working on t-shirts and you don't want to see the pieces separately, this is how you do it. You select the segment line, you right click on it, and you go for this option here. So unfold symmetric editing with sewing. 
check this out. This one works on a similar principle as those two symmetrically edited pattern pieces. If I press Z and start altering one side, because of this mirroring line, it's also gonna be altering the opposite side as well. So this is, again, golden, super, super helpful. When we took the measurement onto the avatar, the avatar was static. If we made the waistband exactly as it is here, what do you think happens when he intakes air? The stomach extends out, maybe not as much as I'm showcasing it, I'm exaggerating here, the dude is skinny, but it does extend out. So when you're doing trousers, you definitely want to add a few extra centimeters to your waistband. I'm gonna press Z, I'm gonna grab the segment here. As you can see, it's being edited on the opposite side. I'm gonna hold down Shift and right click as I'm dragging it horizontally. And let's in this situation here, I'm gonna add 15 or maybe even 17 mil, something like this. Pressing OK, this is gonna be our waistband. I'm pressing Q here, awesome. Then we want to press M and we're gonna be connecting it starting from the back and then towards the front. Cool, so how can we do that? Well, we can do it in a single operation here. We have two options actually, I'm just gonna do the one that I would typically do. Press M, start sewing from the middle at the back and take it towards the front, click. We ended the very first sewing line. I'm holding down shift in order to be able to create multiple sewing lines that are connecting onto the singular one. So I'm starting at the back as well, clicking from the back towards the middle point, then from the middle point towards the front. And as you can see, there is a slight difference, but this difference, we want it to be there. This is actually, first of all, not that noticeable, but we do want the rest of the pan to be slightly larger than the waistband for comfort reasons. So I'm gonna click again, and I want to now release shift. There you have it. This one automatically connected the waistband with the rest of the trouser, the denim. So if I were to simulate now, oh my God, such a mess. Now we have to worry about this. Is there a better way to do it? Of course there is. This is why I asked the question. So I'm pressing Control Z, selecting the waistband, right click on it, and we have this option here, superimpose side. Click it, there you have it, awesome. As you can see, it turned into a dark gray, which is not ideal. We definitely do not want to see this. We want the gray faces when we're in the monochromatic view. We want them to be facing the avatar and not the exterior of the garment. This is called the normal, and this is pretty much where you're adding the texture. This is what the computer wants to see rather than the interior of the garment. So we can simply go here in the 3D window, select the waistband, right click on it, and we can do flip normal, done, fixed. Let's now press N and connect it here at the front. I'm gonna sew it incorrectly, Let's check what happens, not good. How did we fix it? You can of course press B and reverse your sewing line by pressing Ctrl B on your keyboard. There you go, awesome. Now the pair of trousers has a waistband, but how, how can we actually make it so it perfectly sits onto the body and we don't have to do this micro adjustment over and over again? Well, there's a tool for that as well. We can go in here and go for this option here, attach to measure. We can click on the higher point on the waistband first, and then we can click on the measurement which we created previously, click. Then select the opposite side as well, click here and onto the body. And now if I simulate, check what happens. It actually stays there. It stays in place, we don't have to worry about it, we can work on our design, and we're gonna know for a fact that it's not gonna go anywhere. Our oversized pair of trousers is coming together beautifully. I know it looks kind of weird, if you want to see a more drapey fabric, you can of course select all the pattern pieces and let's bring back the default one. And this one just falls more naturally towards the ground, but in reality we're gonna be using a raw denim kind of fabric when we're making them. But just for visualization purposes, it's not good to be using this one as you're designing because it does affect the physical properties, right? So if we were to stretch the legs like we did with this pose here, guess what? When you do it with the normal fabric, you're not gonna see the issue. Then you go to the atelier, sew it with actual raw denim, and you're not gonna be able to walk in them. 
okay? So this is why I'm selecting all of them, bringing back the denim raw. And in case you want to see the texture as you're working, first of all, let's get rid of the stress map, we no longer need it. And then we want to make sure that we're on this option here, thick textured surface. If I zoom in here, we're gonna see that we don't actually have any thickness to our fabric. And in order to add it, we can select all of the pattern pieces by pressing A, and control A, then go here into the property editor. You want to start scrolling down until you see those options here, simulation properties. So it has this weird naming scheme. I honestly have no clue what it means, but we have thickness for collision, thickness for rendering. Collision is what the computer sees, whereas rendering is what we see. And we as humans, we definitely want to see what's going on. So I'm gonna type in 2.5 just so we're matching the same thickness that the computer is seeing when it's doing the simulation. Let's make sure that we have the silhouette pinned down. From the front to me, it looks almost perfect. From the side, let's check the side. We could be adding a, maybe a tiny bit more bulk. We want it to be even fatter than they currently are. So let's just go inside of the 2D window, press Z, start increasing this width here. So I'm gonna right click on it. Let's do an extra 25, which adds up to five centimeters per leg. Awesome, have a look now, even better. Yeah, we're getting there. And we can even add the bulk in the middle. When I'm designing, typically, when I'm doing stuff for garment, I don't like adding here. I kind of like subtracting in order to go for that arced look. I like trousers to kind of look like this, as opposed to straight down. But in this case, we can definitely add a bit down the middle as well. So let's do 25 and 25. Let's check, simulate. Now we're much better much much better and we can even create a tiny bit of a taper so let's say that you want to have the bulk but you don't want to have to deal with this the pant dragging onto the ground it's very uncomfortable very unpleasant how can you fix it i'm gonna press six and we can create a measurement from this base here by right clicking 250 mil from the base press ok let's also do one here as well so on the front panel 250 type it and make sure that it's precise press ok then press Z and start cutting it in right click Let's say that we want to taper it back by 35, which is quite drastic. Let's just see what that looks like for the front panel Since it's smaller. I'm gonna do less. Let's do 18 mil here The length of the overall segment has of course shifted. We still need to fix it afterwards But what about those points here because they're super sharp. Let's just simulate and have a look you can see them here, you can see them protruding out. Well, there's a very easy fix. I'm introducing another tool, very useful one, we use it all the time. Press Z, create a selection box over the two points, right click, and we can convert them to a curve point, which makes it super convenient. Let's now check the length from the segment, make sure that they're equal. This one is slightly larger, and we can definitely start pushing this point in and we want to make it overall 1067.2. So I can press V, start bringing it in, 1067.2, there we have it. Now I'm gonna simulate again and have a look at that beauty. Now it's actually much smaller at the base and we can do exactly the same procedure on the interior. So press X, right click from the base onto the segment. Let's do again 250, press OK. Do the same for the front, type in 250, press OK, and then I'm pressing Z, start to drag this one in, let's do, I don't know, 20 mil for the front, again, this one, 20 mil, awesome, we did the equal amounts, then I'm pressing Z, selecting the two segment points and converting them into curve points. So as you can see, we have this kind of a bulging effect here and here. It goes in and then it goes back out and back in. I'm not that big of a fan of it. So what we can do is with the V tool selected, we can add a bit more fabric here. So increasing the bulk even further and smoothing out our line here as well. Start bringing it out. Awesome. And now we can worry about the actual length onto the segment. So I'm pressing B, 
and they're equal. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, that never happens, literally, but they're equal. So I can simply simulate now, and we've created that tiny bit of a taper, which trust me is gonna make a huge difference, you can already see it, it's no longer dragging onto the ground. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Awesome. If you feel like you have a tiny bit too much fabric here at the front, there is a very easy fix for this. In reality, I would probably stick to this design because having that bit of fabric just adds more comfort and you can move more freely. But we want it to look good inside a clothes as well. So how can we actually grab the fabric and remove it from the front without actually cutting into it, right? Well, check this out. What if I start dragging the back of my trouser? See what that does for the front. Huh. Right, so you drag it from the back, the front becomes tighter, of course. Duh, right? I can press Z and I can now shift this point here. I'm gonna hold down shift as I'm dragging, right click, and I only want to do one centimeter. Do not go crazy with this feature. One centimeter, smallest adjustment. Let's now simulate and have a look. And as you can see, we have a tiny bit less bulk here at the front. And now when I'm looking at the reference, I'm 100% happy, like it's the perfect amount of bulk on all sides. Now we can start working on the smaller details. And let's just take it from the top, take it towards the base. So at the top, let's just add the belt loops. How can we do that? Well, super easy. Press S, click, type in 18 and we'll do them slightly taller than the actual waistband. So let's do 68 because, let's just look at the reference so you better understand why. They're connected at the top, and then they're connected far below the actual waistband. We can even go ahead and shorten our waistband, because now that I'm looking at it, I kind of feel like it's skinnier, which is non-standard, and th this is the standard one, taller. So it actually, you know, holds the belt, but we want to just shorten it. Let's do it by 15 mil. Boom, there we go. It's super skinny now. Yeah, and it seems to be super skinny in their design as well. Yeah, you can definitely see it. Cool, so now I'm simulating again. That kind of raised the trouser. Let's make sure that the length is still there. We want it barely touching the ground or close to touching the ground. It still works even without those 15 mil. Let's try and figure out how do we want to connect the belt loops, open up the reference. And just in case you're not happy working like this, because it's quite dark, right? This is a very dark fabric. We can go here in the object browser, click on the denim raw and go into the property editor Scroll down a tiny amount and you're gonna see material, front, basic parameters, texture. I'm looking for the texture. I wanna click on the drop down and tick on desaturation, which automatically makes it white. Any fabric that you bring through, once you desaturate it, it's not about actual saturation. I know Klo, they're from South Korea, I think. <sighs> it should not be called that, but whatever. And then, where does the color come from? Well, it comes from this tab here. So we can simply click on it, and let's try and make it a slightly darker white or light gray, rather, middle gray. Let's go for this, click OK, and this makes everything a lot easier to actually see, manage, work on. Now that I have my belt loop, where is it in the 3D window? I can't see it. If you can't find an object that you have selected, simply press F, oh, it was on the ground. Where do we want the belt loop at the front? Let's try and pinpoint it. Just a tiny, tiny amount closer to the front than being right down the middle, right between the panel. So we can go here in the 3D window, click. That's gonna give us our reference point and we can use that reference point to position the belt loop right above it. So I'm dragging it, trying to remember where it was. It was right here. I'm pressing M and I want to connect, in this situation, this is a specialty situation. I want to connect the shorter segment first. So I'm gonna click from here to here. I want to only sew it at the top from there to there. If I simulate now, it has a lot of space to travel. The more convenient and less prone to actually crashing and introducing errors method is to right click on it and go for superimpose. And in this case, we want to do over. There we go, it just snapped into place. Why simulate when you have this option as a much cleaner alternative? But I wanna show you again why we've sewn 
the smaller segment onto the much larger one. I'm gonna delete the sewing line, I'm pressing M, and now I want to create, I know that the width here is 18, so let's just click and find 18. And you're gonna see just how fiddly this can be. Oh, we found it. Oh, we dragged it past. Then you'd have to actually measure, make sure that you're matching it, click, and then sew onto it. But if you do it the way that I recommend it, again, click, 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 and you don't have to worry because it automatically shows you what your segment line length should be. You don't even have to know that it should be 18. It just shows you, so it's a lot more intuitive. I simulate it by pressing space. Now, I want to press A, Control D, and duplicate it on the opposite side. It's already positioned as it should, it's already sewn. Now let's do the back, and we can see that the loops are kind of on the side. Yeah, you can see it from the back view. They're not actually on the back of the trouser. They're right on the sides. So let's try and locate that point. Rotate. And let's do it just slightly towards the back. There we go. We have our reference point here. I'm going to select one of the belt loops. Control C, Control V and position it above my reference point. Then M. Sewing it again. Smaller segment to larger segment. Selecting it here. Superimpose over. And now we want to duplicate it on the opposite side. Control D and now it was automatically created here. If we want to shift it around because we feel like it's way towards the back compared to the source, simply grab the sewing line and you can start shifting it in our case here towards the left. Let's just shift it a tiny bit, simulate again, and just do this until you're super happy with your design. This is how you alter things. Awesome, now I'm happy. And we have to do the very final one right down the middle on the back. How? Select one of the belt loops, Control C, Control V, bring it on top of the middle. We can see the mirroring line, so we know that this is for a fact the middle. I can start sewing it, but I don't know exactly where the middle is, because if I have a closer look, it's 9.8 as opposed to 9, which is the half point of 18. Hmm, how can we do this properly? Well, check this out. I'm pressing X, which is the tool of adding segment points, and I can right click right down the middle, it automatically snapped right down the middle, you could have just clicked it there. But this is the even better option. You can go for this option here. Uniform split. When you do a split into two segments, of course, it cuts it down the middle. You can increase the number, you can do three, four. No matter how many you're adding, this tool is going to ensure that you have the perfect equal spacing between all of your segments. Super helpful. In our case, most of the time we're using it for just two segments. I'm going to press OK now. And how can we sew it? Well, let's try with them again. You want to, again, since we only have the reference point down the middle, we can start here and take it there. Again, not good. Do it from the smaller segment onto the larger segment. But should we create another sewing line in order to compensate for the rest of it? Well, we could. But the problem with this is that we would end up having way too many sewing lines on a single project. We're, we're doing one sewing line here in reality. Why don't we do it in Clo as well? Again, because it was kind of tricky to figure out where. I'm gonna delete the second sewing line by pressing B, selecting it and pressing delete. And now I want to widen this one out all the way. And then I'm leaving this point here as it is. We know that it's actually positioned correctly. I'm just dragging this one out. Hmm. There you go. How easy was that? So I can now select the belt loop. I'm gonna do superimpose over. There we have it. Those are the belt loops. What if we actually want to connect them onto the body? We want to go into the window. And again, I'm gonna do it kind of the dirty way. There's a more precise way of doing it, creating multiple references, splitting the patterns, linking them back up. You don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna simply click here. And now we're gonna be learning about one of the most useful tools which oddly enough, we haven't used at all. But this one you're gonna be using all the time, so please memorize it. It's called the internal line, shortcut G. I'm gonna click here. I want to start dragging it towards the right and I want to right click and input my value, 18. Then click again in order to finalize it. I know it's a bit weird, but this is how it works. So internal lines, what can we use them for? Reference, sewing lines, and even more importantly, you're gonna see later down the line, in order to split patterns. So if I were to actually take and draw a sewing line here, I could simply go in, cut and sew, and this is already like, look how cool this design looks. And they're so useful. They're incredibly useful. 
I'm gonna control Z, control Z, get rid of it for now. And now how can we actually sew here so we do it super quickly? I'm gonna press N and I can even do it in the 3D window because it can be quite difficult to figure out which one is which, how do I want to sew it, orient it, let's do it in the 3D window. Click once here, click the second time there. Simulate, boom. Let's do the side. So where do we want it to go? We want it around this point here. Look in the 2D window, G, click, hold down shift, start dragging towards the right, right click, type in 18, we know the width, N, and simply connect it. For the back, it's a tiny bit easier because we know that we want it right down the middle. Where is the middle of our trouser? Here. We can click again to find the reference point, and then we can do G, and I want to do it parallel with the top of our segment. I want to right click and I want to input 9 mil. We only need half because it's gonna get automatically mirrored on the opposite side. And if it's not perfectly straight, I can press Z, go here, lift it up just the tiniest amount. This one, connecting the loop at the back is actually quite a monumental task because first of all, we need to locate it. Then we need to figure out how we're gonna sew it because there are two segments instead of just one. And we're gonna do it in one clean swoop. Let's start here from the left to the right connected the first segment and then we need to hold down shift we need to go onto this panel here start from here to the middle then locate the opposite panel start from the middle towards the exterior release shift and it's gonna create the sewing line this one if you don't have enough experience this can become a nightmare <laughs> so you can even just let it be loose and whatever <laughs> it's not that big of an issue let's now look at the reference again and see what else we can do we could probably take care of the pocket bags doing them in Clo 3d is actually quite easy and i feel very intuitive especially for beginners i'm pressing g again in order to bring out the internal line tool i'm clicking here and i'm clicking here so just creating a straight line from one side to the other and i've done it just on the side of the belt loop i'm pressing v and I want to start curving it as such. Let's create a nice organic curve. This one seems to be a bit higher up, so we can go back in, press Z, lift, lift it up, press V, adjust the curvature. Let's press G again, and we want to create another internal line. I'm gonna first draw it as such, just randomly, because we then want to bring in a more real life reference, which would be our hand. How can we move the hand close enough so we actually figure out, hey, is my pocket bag big enough? Well, there's a tool for that as well. We can open up this skeleton view, which is called the show x-ray joints or shortcut shift plus X. Then we can click here onto the shoulder and we can create a mirrored effect in order to bring both hands at the same time and rotate them. And as you can see, we have those gizmos which make everything super intuitive. Let's just bring it next to the body as close as we can, there we go. Then I want to disable this skeleton view and we can figure out if the depth of our pocket bags is good enough, which in our case, I feel like it is. It's actually perfect. All that we want to do is to create a bit of a curvature because you would have lint and stuff actually getting stuck in the corners. You don't want to have sharp corners. I'm gonna right click here, convert to curve point. There we have it, we can stick to these. I actually like much deeper pocket bags when I do my designs, but you could probably do them smaller and save a bit of fabric, cut a bit of cost. Depends what kind of attitude you want to have behind your brand. I'm adjusting it here just because, <laughs> I don't know, optically I feel like I want to have the same spacing even though it doesn't make a difference and people are not gonna have an x-ray vision of your pocket bag design. I'm gonna press A, I want to control C, control V in order to duplicate it here. I'm gonna now press Z, select the pocket bag line, right click, and I want to select cut. And this has separated the pattern piece. I can simply delete the rest of it. We don't actually need it. I want to now select this internal line with the Z tool, right click, cut it in order to separate it. I'm gonna now shift it to the side and all that we have to do is to actually connect this with the rest of the trouser. Connecting this component onto the waistband can be quite tricky. But before we do that, why don't we do the easier part of it, which would be to just connect it here on the side. Press B, you want to select this sewing line. This one appears as if it's still connected, but we don't need this piece anymore. 
We can even delete it, but I want to save it as a reference. Leave it there just for a second. I'm gonna press B, select this sewing line here, get rid of it. Now you can see it's 100% clean. Then we can press M, start connecting this one from the top to the base. And we know that it goes here as well. So from the top to the base, there we have it. Now we can lift it up just a tiny amount. We can take this one, move it out of the way. And the reason why I saved this component is in order to create a reference point here. I'm gonna press B and I can now locate the sewing line where it connects. I want to right click on this sewing line and we have two options. Add point to pattern on start, do a point there. If I press Z now, I have a reference point. That's super helpful. Right click, add a point on end as well. And now the reference has also been transferred to the opposite side too. So we can select this pattern piece altogether, get rid of it. And we know that all that we have to do is to now connect this one here on the top. So we can simply click here, take it towards the front. And we know that the front is here, so we can connect it from here, take it towards the front. Awesome. And in this case, if we were to simulate, it would actually, let me just do it, it would create collision with the belt loop, with everything, and it would sit on top, which is a sick kind of design, but not what we're looking for here. I'm gonna control Z. And the better way to do it is to select it, superimpose under. Boom. It created, it had like a tiny bit of a play, but whatever, it fixed itself. I simply shifted that one out in order to clean everything up and there we have it. Let's also connect it here. So in order to do a pocket bag, you need two components for it. So we'd actually require this one as well. I'm gonna now again, copy and paste the entire thing. Z, right click, cut. Those two components, when they're connected together, they form the pocket bag. You're introducing your hand in between them. Okay, this one has to be a separate piece altogether. I'm gonna connect this one to this one by sewing from here all the way to the opposite side and from here all the way to this side. Awesome, let's bring this component up. I just lifted it, it's sitting inside of the avatar at the moment, let's just simulate and see what happens. It actually worked to an extent, it's gonna clear itself up any minute now. Those collisions can happen and when you're dealing with interior detail for your clothing, it can become super messy. So I stopped the simulation and simply moved it in. And now the components are actually connected. You can see them here. What's not connected is the pocket bag with the opposite component of the pocket bag. In order to do it, I'm gonna use N, why not? So I can connect this segment to this segment and we, and we can even connect it here on the side. So for this one, M. Start from the base towards the top, start from the base, take it towards the top. Simulate. There you have it, perfection. Now I can select this component here, delete it, and all that we have to do is to control D those two on the opposite side. So control D, bring them over. Simulate. It has created a bit of a collision, it's not a problem. Stop the simulation with both bags selected, bring them in. There you have it. Wait for it to settle. Boom. There you go. It wasn't that bad, was it? This kind of stuff, I kind of hate how Clo works with it. Usually what I would do actually is to not create the pocket bags, not sew them here. I would just save myself an internal line and that would be it as reference. So I want to go here. I can even delete this internal line because it can be very distracting as you're designing. The trouser actually starts to look like a trouser. What's left? Another quick check-in with the reference. Let's take care of the back yoke. This is gonna be super easy. Simply click in the 3D window and let's try and pinpoint exactly where we'd want it to be. We're gonna press G for the internal line and start connecting it towards the left. I failed to click it all the way to the segment, but that's fine. Press Z, simply shift it all the way through. And I think in terms of the positioning, this is actually quite good, quite accurate, yeah. I'm gonna now press Z, select the internal line, and right click on it, and go for this option, cut, and so we want to still keep it connected, we just want to split it into multiple panels. Look how easy that was. I've simulated now, the pant is detached, I think I worked in the meantime on the project, but that's fine. Check out just how nicely it actually sits onto the body. And now, time to create the back pockets. 
Let's try and eyeball them in terms of the actual size. And as you can see, this is the actual pocket bag. The one that you're seeing next to it is fake. It's actually painted on, okay? We're not gonna end up doing this for the final design, but I think it's a very, very cool feature. So, how can we actually make it? Again, very easy to do. Let's just look through the tools here and opt for the internal rectangle. Click once. It tells you to input the width and the height, but I'm just gonna press OK, leave it standard. We can move all of it at once. How? Press Z, select all of it, press A, move it up. Incredible. We can then, of course, scale it, just like we did with the external pattern piece, we can also scale internal lines. We can position them. This one, the gizmo, allows you to rotate. Let's bring them slightly below the yoke. Maybe something like this. And I want to run them parallel with the middle line, where the bum is. Then I'm pressing Z. I want to make it just a tiny bit larger. Oh, that one, I did a mistake there. I don't know if you caught it. But as I was dragging, it had the tendency to go like this. So we're kind of warping the feature. We do not want to warp it. Make sure that it's following your original line as it's being showcased here with the purple lines at the top and at the bottom. So again, let's just have a look. You can right click when it's positioned correctly and you can just type in the value. Let's do 20. Then I'm gonna press X and I want to split this segment into two components. So right click, uniform split, there we go. And I can now start dragging it. The thing is we don't know the angle so maybe we should have actually done this before. <laughs> before we actually rotated it, but we can look for the values here. So 95.9 and 95.9. We need to just make sure that they're equal so that we also know that we're centered. So this one is 102.2, there we go. Perfection. We could make them larger like this. If you're not 100% happy, in order to select the entirety of the feature and not just one internal line, you can double click on it. A, again, in order to get access to the scaling tool. Let's scale it down a bit. Shift it, and I think this is actually quite good. I like the positioning. We could angle it less. This one is being rotated more vertically. So maybe, again, select it, rotate it. Eh, there we go. This is like perfectly vertical. You can do however you want to actually position yours. These are only gonna be a reference line as the internal line, but how do we actually make the pattern piece itself? Well check this out it's so easy press z again double click on the feature right click and we're gonna clone it as a pattern boom <laughs> and it was already automatically created it's not sewn on to that's a bit of an issue but we can just press m and we can sew it in just one go we don't have to create every single sewing line on all the sides click from the left upper corner take it all the way to the right upper corner and then connect it there we go. And I don't want to simulate it like this. I want to position it first and only afterwards simulate. I go in the 3D window, select the piece, right click on it, superimpose, over. Done. How do we copy it to the opposite side? You guys are super sharp, you already know that. Control D or Command D on Mac. There we go, simulate, boom. Now we have back pockets. In order to do the button and the button hole, we can go for this tool here. Select the button and I'm simply gonna do it onto the piece which sits on top. Which is kind of like a fake way of doing it because in reality you would need to extend this piece out, bring it underneath, have a bit of an overlap and you need to sew the button onto this piece that sits below, right? And then you'd have to do the buttonhole onto this piece here. I've created it now, let me just shift it. But this is kind of kind of a basic design you can render it like this is not a problem we should probably also take care of the fly how do we do that well we need to first of all select this pattern piece but do keep in mind this is a point of no return so you only want to do this when you're actually rendering the garment rather than designing it let's get past the design stage and try and do it very quickly press g i want to create an internal line i'm connecting this side here with the top press z i failed to actually connect it V and start curving it. I'm gonna make it so it extends out. It extends out through a second point as well. And then it gets brought back in. You can decide however angular you want to have it. But 
as you can see, we kind of have a problem here. It got duplicated on the opposite side. This is why I was saying it's a point of no return. So I can select the pattern piece here and I'm gonna remove the linked editing. So now when I'm modifying this piece, it does not affect this one anymore. So if I also make a mistake, <laughs> then I'm screwed, right? Because I have to go back in and correct it and try and figure out exactly what went wrong. Z, I'm gonna select this internal line, simply delete it, and we could leave it just as an internal line, but we can also separate it in order to have this sort of detail, which is done from a normal map. Let me select the internal line, right click, cut and sew, and now you can kinda see it, right? It looks a bit more realistic, it's still nowhere near to the level of realism that we're gonna achieve with this project, but this is it, this is how you design it, in the next videos, we're gonna have a look at how we can prepare the patterns, how we take them over to the atelier, how we make the garment, and then we're gonna come back home and we're gonna texture all of it. We're gonna have a look at how we can render it in a virtual production environment. Just gone on to the